Hello all. To those that have joined early, uh, thank you very much for joining us today for our webinar to talk through the benefits of digital fixed systems, remote visibility and control. Uh, my name is Will Allen. I'll be taking us through the presentation. I'm going to give it a few minutes to allow everyone who wishes to attend to react to their meeting invite. Uh, and I'll make a start in a couple of minutes. Thank you. Okay, guys, I think I'll make a start. Uh, people can join in. If anyone's joining late, then um, they can carry on and listening. So um, thank you all. Welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to, to all that have joined us from around the world. I hope you're all well. Um, and uh, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Will Allen. I am the uh, Product Marketing Manager at Crocon for the FIX Systems. Uh, and today I'd like to take you through the benefits of digital FIX Systems uh, remote visibility and control. So if we make a start, um, first of all, just an outline. Um, we are gonna be looking at uh, different types of uh, fixed gas detection system communications uh, and the benefits of what digital communications can offer. Uh, also, we're gonna be looking at the Crocon's um, recently launched digital solution uh, with an introduction to the new GM controller. Uh, I'll take you through a operation and navigational video uh, just to show you some of the basic tasks uh, and how they're completed on the GM controller um, and then we'll look to focus on remote visibility so first of all benefits of remote visibility and then showing the function which our GM controller has uh, and I'll go through a live uh, operation and navigational demo just to show you those benefits firsthand so um, if you wish to uh, ask any questions, um, please feel free to um, type them in the chat element of your um, login page to go to there, and I will look to answer them uh, towards the end of the meeting. So feel, feel free to type any messages throughout the presentation, and I'll get to them at the end. Thank you. So first of all, um, just an introduction uh, to the fixed gas detection and the communication methods um, that we see. So. Um, we're all very associated with uh, the conventional analog or point-to-point -point systems that we've seen. They've been around for a long, long time uh, and it's still for many um, operations and operators, it's still the first choice. So uh, people are still very much um, used to using the analog systems and they're very comfortable with them. Uh, it gives them that level peace of mind um, when they're doing their uh, everyday tasks. But there has been an emergence of digital and uh, other communication technologies, meaning that a lot more information uh, can be communicated via this control system. And there's also added benefits with reducing cabling costs, which we know is a growing uh, frustration in the marketplace. 
So, first of all, um, a lot of you will be very aware of um, what our traditional 4 to 20 milliamp point to point system achieves. Um, but I just wanted to give you a bit of a breakdown of this then versus what a digital system looks like. So here we have a little image I've created here of our existing, of our existing products in Gas Master and some XGuard products uh, working on an analog uh, 4 to 20 milliamp communication channel. Um, one of the restrictions that we have um, with a point to point system is the amount of information that can be fed from the controller via the detector. So effectively, what is happening between the controller and the detector is a, um, a four to twenty milliamp um, reading is read across this um, across this communication channel. So it's a milliamp reading which is uh, then being converted into a gas reading um, to be read at the controller. So effectively, if we're seeing less than three milliamps across this channel, we're seeing it into going into fault. Anything over 21.5 milliamp is a gas reading over scale. And you set your, you predefine your alarm triggers at certain milliamp um, settings, which are then converted into gas readings at the controller. So point to point uh, cables, uh, hopefully my uh, image shows you that you can see that vast amounts of cabling is required in order to achieve this point to point scenario. So this can be significant cable usage when you're looking at multiple detector applications. And depending on that application, they could vary in how the distance apart they are and how far away um, that, that reading needs to be covered from. So cable costs, um, again, depending on application, can often cost even more than the fixed head detector itself. So cable cost is um, when you're looking at a, a, a very large application or a long distance application, can often be um, a more expensive part of the solution than the detector and controller itself. So if we then compare that uh, in a similar slide format to um, our digital addressable systems. So um, what I've done here in my image has changed. Uh, I have our uh, recently launched um, GM controller. One of our products in there is the GM64, which we're showing. And uh, again, our recently launched XGuard Bright, which is uh, our product which offers digital uh, comms capability. So if we take a look at the um, digital addressable loop comms, um, these can connect multiple fixed detector heads on one or multiple loops. So as my image demonstrates there, we're seeing a cable which is running to a detector, then through to a second one and a third one. So um, the GM controllers, there's a different uh, channel capability in, in our range, uh, but you can have as many detectors on one loop as you wish. Um, and uh, as standard, the GM controller has two loops, uh, which can be upgraded to four loops if that's required as well. So what that results in is a significant reduction in cable requirements and installation time. So it's not only the cable that can be uh, quite costly, but the increased installation time is cost in labor. So there's additional cost to be factored in there as well. Uh, and we believe, obviously this is an average, but we believe the estimated cable usage um, is reduced by about 70% when you're looking to um, execute a digital addressable loop rather than a point-to-point -point system. So there's some significant savings that can be made by using this type of system um, with regards to installation and cable requirements. Also, we're looking at the advanced data that can be transferred via the digital communications as well. So we're seeing actual gas readings that are fed back down this, uh, this channel rather than it being converted. Also, we're able to see diagnostic data, service data, calibration history, and even things like temperature can be sent down this digital comms channel. And um, also what that will enable you, to, enables you to do is you're able to change uh, calibration or update a configuration um, remotely. So using these channels, you're able to uh, complete the task remotely. And uh, this might result in an operator um, usually having to visit a gas detection system in a potentially hazardous location. That risk is um, reduced because uh, you're not needing to go into that hazardous location anymore. And overall improving safety for an operator or an operation um, in that area. So there's not just cost benefits from looping together these, there's also advanced data information and remote ability that you can uh, ex execute via this digital system as well. So if we take a look at what our new solution is, um, uh, Procon are very pleased to have uh, last year, end of last year, released a new range uh, of controllers, the GM controller range. 
and we have three products within this lineup. Um, the functionality is all identical, and the only difference being the channel capabilities of each of these controllers. So the GM16 is a 1 to 16 channel input. We have a GM64, which is the image you see there. And we also have a GM128, which is 128 channels, which is effectively two GM64s, which are bolted together. Also, uh, we now have a new uh, product uh, in our lineup with regards to digital comms. Uh, we have the new XGuard Bright. Um, this is a very versatile detector with um, both uh, traditional analog and digital communications, but also with the non-intrusive OLED display window as well, uh, becoming a large requirement um, around the world. Uh, and some of our existing products that you may be uh, aware of, which is our existing XGuard IQ, very intelligent gas detector, smart sensor technology and SIL2 certification, and also our IR Max, which is our a direct infrared uh, hydrocarbon gas detector with, uh, with very rapid fail-safe detection for gases and vapors. So just to point out here, um, this new range of controllers, they do offer digital communications, but they also they offer the 4 to 20 milliamp uh, uh, comms as well. So it's not just a, di a digital controller, it can do everything that we've done before, but now with digital comms as well. And, to, and you can mix and match. So for example, if you have a scenario where you have 20 detector heads, you can set up 10 to have the traditional analog system, and you can also have 10 which is doing digital as well. So you can mix and match depending on your requirements for your application, but this controller does it all. Okay, so a mini introduction here to the controller itself. Um, we're very proud to launch this new product. Um, we believe it's a very easy um, to use, very easy to configure, and gives us now up to 64 channels all on one screen. Um, uh, and we can have up to 128 in one system via two screens when bolted together. So what we're able to achieve here is we're seeing simultaneous display of all of the live channels, all of the alarm functions, and all of the input variables on that one color screen. Uh, and as you can see in the image I have there, this is all 64 channels, all live, and uh, showing you what uh, the current situation is in that particular channel. Um, as we said there, it's, it's, uh, it's a 4 to 20 analog, also um, has a RS-485 Modbus digital comms and heart enable comms, all the standard. Um, the addressable functionality we've already touched on, we, we're going to touch on that some more in a second, but uh, the direct to web page feature, this uh, live feed communication. So this is a really neat feature this product has. Uh, again, a standard feature of this product. It's not a, an additional function you need to purchase, it's standard. Um, everything that you can complete at this screen um, by using the, the, the buttons on the side here can be completed remotely via a direct to web page feed. And I'm going to show you a live demonstration of uh, how that's done and how that looks and how that can be navigated to uh, reduce the need to visit the controller in some scenarios. Um, all those things we can do is, as you can see, is this non-intrusive operation. Uh, we, all of those things can be done via that direct live web page. Um, the color LCD display allows us to monitor live data and trends as well. So um, we're this controller is recording uh, data for us and any um, calibrations or updates or faults that have arrived, then we are able to monitor that and uh, record it in, in the data and trends information. And uh, the color-coded um, cells, they actually change to indicate alarm. So it's very clear to see that any of the uh, channels um, that are set up on the system are going into alarm. It's highlighted by a certain color of choice. So the um, GM16 and the GM64 are both available in enclosures of different sizes. Um, and the GM1664 and 128 are all available in rack in, uh, mountains as well. So if we take a look um, at some of the improved functionality and what it gives us, what do these GM controllers give us? So uh, additional benefits, we now have an increased channel capability via one controller. So for those multiple um, head applications, we're able to do more work via one system setup. We have already touched upon the two different ways of communications, both are standard and uh, the simultaneous display of various uh, 64 input variables on one color LCD, LCD display screen gives an added benefit to see anything that's happening all in one system on one screen. So looking at cost benefits, um, this controller is a modular design. So all of these controllers are modular. 
So that means that the controller can be configured and designed exactly to how the user's requirements see fit. Um, and the idea of this is to reduce complexity and cost. So um, you choose what you need. Anything you don't need, you don't need to choose. So you pick, if you have a certain amount of channels that you need it for, you only pick up to that amount of channels. If you need a certain amount of relays that need to be um, selected, uh, then you pick as, as many as you require. So that is looking to reduce cost and complexity of the unit. And also a, key, a, a neat feature here is it can be upgraded at any time. So we know it's quite often in the case there's a growing plant or site where they initially need a certain number of detector heads which needs to be upgraded in the future. These controllers can always be upgraded. You can add channel functionality, channels, functionality, and capability all added after the installation date. So that, that can be done at any time by simply adding a bolt-on uh, accessory to that as well. So looking at cost as well, um, this I tried to build a scenario here where we've looked for a, a high amount of detector heads on one system setup. Um, so we have um, a scenario here where we've got 60 channels, so 60 detector heads are required, and um, we would have to currently link up five vortex units in order to link them together in order to achieve um, 60 detector heads. But with one single GM64 with 64 channel capabilities, we're able to achieve that via one system and plus the additional benefits that we've just touched upon. And at list price, um, the comparison is about 45% less. So there's significant um, reductions if you have large multiple detector head applications where um, you need to uh, have on one system, there's great benefits from using the GM products. And from an end user as well, uh, operational improvements. Um, this definitely improves the user interaction, the functionality and the control. I'll show you how that's done in the video in just a second. Uh, we have alternate display options. So there's a choice of how you view your data. Um, and this can be simply changed with one touch of a button, a very simple uh, display option cycle. Um, this automatically records events, it records alarms and trends, anything that you want to review um, is recorded and can be exported from the controller as well. Uh, a lot of configuration options, you're able to do things such as name your channel, name your zone, um, you can set relay trips to where you need them, if they're high, low, what that set point would be and uh, the direct web page communication. This, is, this feature really will improve the uh, operational tasks that need to be completed and reduce risk um, when doing that as well. If I'd like to just take you into now a um, couple of mini videos uh, that I've made uh, whilst at home during uh, this uh, lockdown period. Uh, I have taken home uh, one of our GM16 demo kits uh, what this demo kit is, is a GM16 controller, which has been uh, communicating with one of our new XGuard brights. Um, this uh, is set up in an addressable format, although I've only got one controller. Um, so if we take a look at what we're viewing right now, this is our main display screen. This is the default display screen that you will see. Um, you will notice there are um, various um, disabled channels there. This is the reason I've only got one detector link to this. But on a GM16, we can view all 16 of these channels at the same time. So you're able to um, uh, mix about how many channels you see. So the next screen, we have ability to see uh, zones. So we have uh, up to eight zones which can be um, used. And these zones can be renamed. So for a process or location on site, um, you're able to apply a name for each zone and also you're able to um, link a channel to this zone you can link as many channels to any to each zone as you wish you can have you can have all 64 in there or you can have just one depends on what your situation is um, but you'll see that uh, in that zone we have an alarm one alarm two and alarm three and a fault so if any of them any detector that goes into alarm one two three or fault that's allocated to that zone, it will flash up and you click on the zone and it will show, it will take you to that, the, that detector to see what that information is. Um, and like I say, you can apply as many uh, channels to a zone as you wish um, and um, you can disable any of the zones that you're not required as well. So then next up, um, we have a uh, trend screen, which should just come up now. Um, so this is a 30 minute trend screen. So I'll just explain what we're viewing on this screen here. Um, at the top, there's a green um, chart running across the screen. This is giving us our basic information here, what channel we're looking at, the measurement uh, value, 
and the name. So this is an O2 and our current reading uh, of our uh, Xcard Bright. Um, on the left hand side, we'll see there's a bar graph um, that will go up and down depending on what the current gas level is. And on that bar chart, you'll see there's a yellow. It's very difficult to see. I'll show you this in, in a clearer picture in a second. But there's a yellow triangle running across the screen and a red one. And these are showing our set points for our alarm one and our alarm two. So if the bar graph goes below that because the region's changed, it will go below that and show you that. In the middle of the screen, uh, we see the yellow and red triangles running from right to left again. And in, every, in um, three minute cycles, you are seeing the, a blue line above that is what our current reading has been across that period of time. So lucky enough in my house, I've had a very consistent oxygen reading across that time. So uh, next up is looking at a 24 hour trend screen. So in a similar format than we saw on the previous screen, we're actually stretching the time out over a longer period. So this is over 24 hours. Uh, we are seeing a um, each cell represents an hour. So we're in four hour elements, we're, we're going up and we can see running across the screen from uh, right to left is our alarm set points with the yellow and the red triangles running across or lines running across the screen. And again, over that 24 hour period, the blue line will constantly update over that 24 hours. So you're able to see and view uh, anything that's happened over that period of time. Next up is, uh, there's not much data to see here, and um, this would be full if we had a full um, range of detectors which are linked to this, but this is effectively a bar graph screen, um, and you can select up to 16 channels to view at once on this screen. Uh, on a GM16, that would be all of the channels, um, but on a GM64, you can pick and choose which channels you want to view here. So if there's some specific channels that you want to view uh, in a certain area or in um, or a certain gas type, for example, you can pick and choose which channels are going here. And again, it's the bar chart has the alarm one and alarm two settings on there. So you can see by that bar graph, a current exact reading and by bar graph, you can see if they're going up and down. So from a distance, you're able to view that. And that takes us back around to the uh, main default display screen, which is giving us visibility on all of the channels at the same time. So they're the, they're the five display options that you have. So they, it may be dependent on what the customer wants to see. Uh, he's able to view it in different ways, or perhaps at a certain period of the day, he wishes to switch it or check a trend. And he has multiple options to do that. And that's a single button press, um, which is next button on the uh, GM controller itself. So next up is just some information here. I've created this video to look at doing some configuration options. So if we go into the menu, uh, we take a look uh, into the system. We have many options here and what we can look at. So if we first of all look at configure, we're able to change the name of our controller. So in some cases, you may find there's various different controllers on site. You're able to name it. You have various options here to, to apply the date and the time and confirm. Um, you can change the amount of channels that you view here. So on the GM16, you can switch between eight or 16. On a GM64, you can go in up in multiples of 16, depending on how many you want to see. Um, also, we're able to um, come out of this. Interesting, we come out, it saves your configuration. We go down into zone names. This is where we have the option to name our zones. Again, we have 20 characters here to uh, choose what we would call that. You'll pick one of the, any of those zones and can rename them to a location or a process to allow you to do that. So if we look at the event log here, and this is from when it's powered up, this will immediately start collecting all of this information. So we have a time, a date, what the event actually happened, and if that channel was affected, um, it is, is saved here. Also in inhibit mode, so we, we're able to um, start and inhibit by simply clicking here. I haven't done it for the purpose of this video, but you share how simple that is in order to inhibit. And if we exit that saves any configuration, you go back to the main screen, it saves that configuration. And here's a neat feature on the SD card. So on this AD, we have an SD card slot just to the left of, um, of the controller, and we can save a config that we've done and save it on this SD card, or we can load one. We can make a configuration online and use the SD card to load it back into the system. So if we look at channel config now, um, you can scroll through the various channels here. Uh, we'll focus on channel one, which is the one we have live right now. Uh, we have options here to look at the uh, different options we have. So this is alarm one, this is, this is how we change our set point. We can pick if it's latching, and we have our trip on low. This is oxygen depletion setup. So we've got a trip on low. We can set delays on the relays, and the same thing can be done 
for alarm two. We can set our set point and the various things that we completed there. We can also, obviously, for alarm three, not applicable in this case, but we can do that. So if we go to configure into the channel, this is where we get to name that channel. We can, again, we have 20 characters. You're able to choose what you want, your engineering units, zero span. Um, you can confirm if you want the channel on or off. You can turn it on or off here. This is where you apply which zone you wish that channel to be uh, assigned to. So by cycling through the zones, that will apply it to that particular zone. We'll leave it in zone one for this purpose. And this is a really neat feature, um, copy the channel. So you're able to, if you've uh, configured one channel, you can copy what you've done to that channel and you can copy and paste it to another channel. That's a really neat feature, which I'll, I'll show you how we do that um, when I show you the live demonstration in a second. Hopefully that gives you a bit of information on how we can configure these units, the multiple options that you have, how quick and easy it is done. And the options that you have are, can be tailored to the requirements. Every user or operator may have a different requirement uh, from their controller and I think this gives them a lot of a choice uh, when it comes to uh, viewing that data. And we think this is going to reduce the time um, needed to complete some tasks and effectively puts you in control of your controller. So uh, I think that really gives benefits to the end user with some of the features this product has. So if we move on now to um, remote visibility and control. So uh, effectively here, what I see the benefit of remote visibility control is going to be looking to have fewer risks, improve safety and saving time. So as we know, gas detection systems are uh, often mounted in potentially hazardous locations, uh, but we do know also that access to the system is absolutely necessary to do the general service in maintenance and key task completion that needs to be done on these systems. So. How does remote access improve operation? So it does it in various different ways. The operator uh, can view environmental conditions uh, before entering a location. So this gives them uh, improved safety. Uh, they're able to do that before even entering a potentially hazardous location. A lot of actions can actually be completed uh, without the need to even enter that location. So they're reducing their exposure, reducing their risk about ever, without never needing to enter the location in order to complete a task. Another one, I've got an image of a control room operative here, um, but a control room operative, um, this remote visibility can be fed to any screen or device with internet capability. So um, the control room operative may be able to react very quickly um, to uh, activate perhaps a process in order to reduce risk or alert operators um, to vacate that unit um, very quickly uh, when there's something happens in that scenario. So um, you can actually set up a, um, a a process improvement where there's ventilation, for example, there needs a ventilation system can be activated by the control room uh, when he's reacting to the issue that arises from our gas detection system. And also, uh, an operator can instantly review the gas detection system rather than arranging a visit. So potentially that might require a work permit to enter a location. That takes a lot of time and effort in order to complete. So uh, he may not even have to arrange a work permit because he may not need to visit that location because of the uh, ability to read and action uh, gas, gas controller system elements remotely. So I'd like to, uh, oh, gone too far, this one. So uh, I'd just like to introduce you to um, what our product can do in order to support that. So the GM controller range, once it's connected to a network, allows direct to web page feature. So this was this feature, the neat feature that I was talking about a little earlier. Um, and if we go into the menu and go into the settings, there's a network settings option, um, which allows you to see a unique to the controller IP address. Uh, and that can be located in the controller network settings. So you take the IP address, um, you can put that into any device with internet or browser, um, and it gives you remote access to all functionality that is available at the controller panel. So effectively, you no longer need to visit the panel itself. You, everything can be done remotely via any device. So as my image at the bottom shows there, you can use a uh, mobile phone, you can use a tablet or a laptop, any device which has got a screen and internet capability, you're able to view this data in. Um, so what all those things that I showed you before, visibility to the various display screens, all can be viewed looking at the uh, remote um, web director web page feature. 
ability to configure the channels, configure the zones, all the controller options you saw me do, again, all done via the web app. You can inhibit remotely, you can change or update settings or even review or export the data using that remote direct to web page feature. And as my uh, image shows there on the different devices, you can have multiple devices can all remotely view the data at the same time. So those three screens have all got something different on them, but they're all looking at the same controller. So you can give an unlimited amount of access to view the data remotely, um, but we, are, we have kept it secure by applying a password, um, which only allows you to make the changes and save those changes when you have that login password uh, entered. So if I may, I'd like to uh, just do a live demonstration on viewed. Um, so going to an internet browser here, so we have our new Procon website, which has given us uh, a lot of information here. If you haven't visited our new website, please do. Uh, but if I look at a new tab here, we can see I have uh, the IP address that I've taken from the um, previous uh, screen um from the, the the controller i've entered it into this uh, internet browser page now i'm remotely viewing the information that was i was seeing at the controller so as we can see here we have the 16 channels um 15 of which are disabled but the one channel that i've got it linked to channel one the o2 um and the current volume that we have there so we're able to view that information here and see the data pretty clearly we can also look at the zones. Uh, we have our uh, detector, which is assigned to zone one, as you saw here. You can view this remotely and any detectors that go into alarm will instantly react here. And you're able to view if they've gone into alarm one, alarm two, alarm three, if applicable, out or fault. And uh, you're able to view that instantly. We can look at the channels here. So uh, I've had um, this controller plugged in um, since this morning. So this is a bit clearer to understand. So this is our trend screen over the 24 hours. We're able to view our alarm uh, one is, is predefined here with the yellow line and our alarm two is predefined here with the red line. So this black line is the oxygen, actual oxygen gas reading that we've had over that period of time. So over the seven and a half hours it's been set up, you can see we had a pretty consistent line there, but you will see if, if it either increases or decreases, you'll see this line will drop up and down uh, on the chart to see um, any changes there. So we have a look at the history. Uh, we can see the event log. So the information I showed you earlier is mirrored here. Uh, we have a date, we have a time, we have a, um, an event that actually happened and any channel it was applicable to that event will be listed here as well. Uh, and what you're able to do with this is you're able to um, log your download. So if I look here, I've, got, I've set up a folder, which is GM16 demo kit. If I click on that, I look in 2020, and I can look in April, for example, and it, all the days that this was plugged in, uh, it hasn't been plugged in the whole time, but the days that it was plugged in, you can see there's some information um, that has been recorded. So if I click on the 23rd of April, we see down here, there's an Excel file has, has, has started to open. If I click on this, we see that it has exported all of the data that we've collected uh, is, is exported here. So we have all the information that we had, the time, what's happened, what channel was applicable, all that information is shared and, and it goes, and this goes all the way up to the different channels that you have. So you're able to uh, view that data by uh, exporting from the system. So if we look at configure, um, you have options for alarm outputs. You can make your options here. Um, now, in this stage here, we're not able to save anything because we're not logged in. So in here, if we uh, put in our special uh, uh, secret code, which is uh, only given to operators, which you wish to allow to make changes or to make configuration options, you can choose what this is. Now we're logged in, we're able to save. We can save anything, any changes that we make here. So all of these changes, we have the ability to, to update and um, by clicking the save button, they will be applied. To, the, to both the web page and to the controller directly. So if we look at the channel config, we have an option uh, of all of the channels. In this case, we have a GM16. So we have up to 16 channel options here. And this is where we look to start setting and configuring our channel. So we have our set point, which is set there. We can um, set if it's a high or low trip, any delay on that alarm. Same thing for alarm two, set point, all the information is confirmed there. And if applicable, you can do it for alarm three. Uh, the configuration here, so you can enable or disable the channel um, if that's a requirement. 
Um, you can. This is where you name that channel. You can you have up to 20 characters to call it what you wish. Um, you, you get to confirm your engineering units for what it's been read in, the zero, the span. Um, here is where we select which zone we want the channel to be applied to, um, and we'll keep it for zone one in this case. Um, this is where the data from. So you select here, dependent on what communication channel you've used. You might have used an analog input. You may have used a Modbus digital input, and that might change in the future. So you're able to make the change from what data source is being used here. In my case, I'm using an addressable um, system, uh, loop, so uh, I'm sticking to the Modbus comms channel. So we have here, we have options to look at comm uh, interface. So as I mentioned earlier, there's uh, two addressable loops uh, which are um, standard on all of the GM controllers. So you have two different loops of addressable digital comms, um, and you can uh, upgrade it to have up to four um, by having a piggyback board. So this is effectively telling you which loop your uh, uh, detector is going to be on, and you select which one. So this one, we're on the COM1. And uh, all information, when it's confirmed, you can click Save, and that will update it, not just on the web page, but it will also, also update it onto the controller as well. And if you want to quickly, you can quickly choose what channels you want to look at, and you can uh, cycle up and down by picking channel up or channel down here as well. Very simple. The copy to channels feature. This is probably even easier on the web page than it is doing it at the controller. But for example, I may have an application here where I have multiple um, detectors or channels which are going to be doing the same job. So I may have a, I've set up, I've configured one of my channels, which is channel one. I might want to apply that to various other channels doing exactly the same thing. So if I, I pick the channel I want to copy the configuration from, I now select which channels I want to paste that configuration to. And then once you've, uh, you can click copy, that successfully updates. And if I go back to system, we'll now see that we've effectively pasted the same configuration to those different channels. So dependent, obviously these will be uh, digitally um, talking to um, a different uh, detector. In this case, I've just, uh, I'm speaking to the same detector, but you will see that you'll be wired to different controllers and using the same configuration, you can copy and paste that one configuration, quite neat. Um, so you get to you have to look at your programmable relays here, you get those options that you get to pick here about your programmable relay and the information you wanna do here, you can all make that, that um, choices there. System configuration, uh, we can look to rename our, um, our controller itself. We set the date and the time. We can look to view eight or 16 channels at once. So if, if, we, if we click that to eight, we can see that there's a difference in how many channels are viewed at once. Uh, you're able to do that and make a choice. There's multiple choices if you pick a 64 channel, or 48 or 32. In this case, we only have a GM16, so we can view up to 16 at one time. Uh, and this is where you're able to rename the zones. So you can rename the zones for a process or a location, uh, and that gives you the ability to do that. By clicking Save, that will be applied. So um, we're able to email a config as well. So um, we can uh, easily um, put in this information. Uh, we can email uh, the configuration out to four different email users, and um, the event messages, anything that's happened uh, during that time. So if, if, if there's an alarm one change, for example, uh, com error, you can pick which one of these users, user one would be user one here, or user two would be user two. And you select, you, depending on who your user is applied up here in the um, email box cell, um, you would then select which person gets that information. And you can pick how frequently um, each of those people are receiving that information. So uh, if they're using it daily or weekly, you can pick each person's gonna be picking it, how frequently they need that information to be emailed to them. So it's keeping everyone who's involved um, from an operation level yeah, absolutely in check with what's happened to the controller if anything has changed. Also, this uh, config upload or download. Um, so we can um, uh, download the system configuration um, to, uh, to a uh, folder on a file on your computer or to an SD card. Also, if we've previously done a configuration online, which we've saved a file, we can actually choose a file here pick the configuration and then drop it here and upload it. So all of that, all of those configuration options are done
via this way you can do it online it's looking to reduce the amount of um, requirement to go to hazardous areas and look to uh, improve the speed and functionality of uh, those operations as well so if i um look to go back to my controller so effectively what we're looking at here now is um what's up next um so we're looking to um, seek out opportunities where potential addressable systems or remote visibility will provide a solution or benefit to site installation or operations um, so we'll hopefully the information i provide today will show you where that benefit will really be found and uh, there will be a lot of operators which are frustrated by certain um, tasks that need to be completed which a benefit will be taken from some of the features that this controller has so if there's anything that we can do to help win these opportunities please let us know um, if you need any further information on this um, um, on the data that i've uh, advised upon all the products that i've advised upon please get in touch we're, we're very uh, we're here to help and feel free to get in touch and we'll be happy to uh, discuss anything further so um, that's the end of my presentation i hope you found it uh, a benefit there's some information in there which has uh, given you some education to maybe just the uh, benefits of, uh, of digital systems and remote visibility and control and giving you an introduction to some of our new products which uh, adhere to that so um, if there's uh, any questions please feel free to start typing them into the uh, chat box now i'll be um, i can try my best to answer any questions that come through and uh, I appreciate your time and thank you very much. So I'll just see if there's any chat information come through. If anyone wants to type any message, I'll be happy to help. I, I don't seem to be having anyone typing any message coming through. So uh, in which case, that again, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. This uh, pr presentation will be made available to view um, by yourselves remotely. So. Thank you for your time. If you need anything, my name is Will Allen uh, and uh, reach out to the Crocon marketing team and I'll be happy to help you any further. Thank you very much for all your time. Appreciate it and goodbye.